the third film made at Toei that ascends the prior two. It's an adaption and a collaboration with its creator, Tezuka, who created the manga. But this is still Journey to the West at its heart. And it does a great job of condensing that narrative into an hour and a half family film. While bringing something that the prior two films lacked. Strong characterization. This is the most vivid we've seen the animation at Toei so far. And maybe the most consistent of all of them. As far as being the Disney of the East, this is as close as you're going to get. We've come a long way from the lip flaps not matching. The main characters the science this time are very striking. And the same could be said about the backgrounds, which are more meticulous, similar to the style of Disney's Bambi. And even the musical beats have more of an American animation style. There are these psychedelic and trippy, with more unorthodox animation parts of the film, reminiscent of Dumbo. Both Yatsel Otsuka and Yasuji Mori had proven themselves as some of the most outstanding of the new crop of animators, with Mori seeing a rise in responsibility now animating both the main characters. He outdoes himself, both in expressive and minute ways. His characters speak volumes without having to say a word. One of the highlights of this is the scene with Rin Rin in the snow. It's a very emotional scene, which was so effective the premise was reused in Hole's Prince of the Sun. In action scenes like the two versus one, we see that Mori's specialities in movement are not his only. He has great timing in both the action and comedic parts of those fights. But here comes some old school animation drama. Tezuka wanted to kill off Rinrin, Rin, but the studio and animators told him that's not how you should end a film. You know, you don't want to end with the children crying, but Tezuka wasn't having any of it. He left and created his own animation studio which then dealt with all his adaptions from that point on. The point he was making is that he should have a creative control to end the films any way he likes. The system shouldn't be so rigid. On the other hand, though, Miyazaki's book, Starting Point, paints the situation from his senior's point of view, which said that it was both a manipulative strike on the audience, as well as something that he suggested to cut costs to the animation, and less for artistic merit, which isn't the case when it comes to Otsuka's animation through the film. Highlight being the final fight, which he has with the antagonist. Now this antagonist would later inspire the design of Bowser. In fact, the character artist on it, Yochi Kotabe, used to work at Toei before starting at Nintendo. Overall, skipping all the minute details, it's not a perfect film. It takes the edge off some of the material and skims through its more fascinating earlier section. And it could have been a tighter story, with some parts like the dance sequences maybe going on a little too long, and other bits that could have went a little quicker. But do I recommend it? Yes. It still holds up as inventive family fun. That can occasionally tug on your heartstrings. The best we've seen so far, with hopefully more to come. If you'd like to hear more about it, I talk about it in my top 10 60s anime video. And yeah, thanks for listening.